All right, guys. Are you ready for some map compass boss shuffle? Not particularly the mode I would want to race in a game three series. Not gonna lie. But it is what it is. That's the tournament. And that's what we're playing tonight. Uh, I am on good authority that Andy hates this mode. <laughs> he does not like map compass shuffle at all. And uh, I'm going to explain to you guys because we have a, about a minute or two about what map compass boss shuffle is all about. So the name of the game here, guys, is that all maps and compasses are shuffled within the regular item pool, meaning that maps and compasses do not uh, no longer anchor to their dungeons. Uh, they can be found anywhere. So they can be found in Cat Creek. Oh, they can be found in Dark World Death Mountain. Uh, they can even be found in dungeons, but it doesn't mean that they have to be there kind of thing. And number two is that bosses are shuffled. <laughs> so again, quite a bit of variance. It also means that now dungeons are a little more lucrative to dive, but then that's kind of counteracted by the fact that you might not be able to beat the boss. So that's why this one's going to be a bit challenging to kind of it's, it's a really, I'm going to say from my experience, this one's pretty challenging to kind of figure out and kind of know when the right time is to kind of dive a dungeon. So we might see our runners kind of maybe play this one safe being a game three and try to kind of exercise as much overworld as possible. But we're just going to wait and see. Does the map shuffle also hide the crystal info? Great question. Uh, I believe it does. It's been a hot minute since I played one of these, but 100% I believe it does. It's just like a key sanity, right? Like if the map is not available and it's regular dungeon, then it won't be known. All right, guys, we're about to get started here. Hang on to your butts, all of them. Even if you got an extra, hang on to it. We starting. Uh, Andy. Andy. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I was like, uh, why, why did it not start? There we go. Uh, all right, so both our runners are going to elect to kind of start off here with the uh, the old tried, tested, and true Uncle Rao. Uh, both our runners picking up the sign and kind of attacking a guard. Andy getting a bomb drop there, as well as Vex. And also getting greeted with uh, extra bombs here. A pretty, a pretty standardized route, I would say. It's one of the options. Uh, you either would see this route to start from any runner, or you would see the Kakariko first. A lot of people will argue that Kakariko Thirst is the uh, most proficient and saves the most travel, as we see in early lane up for both our runners here. Uh, but I, I honestly, I don't mind me, uh, I don't mind me an uncle start, man. Sometimes you get really lucky, you get uh, the right item. And Andy once again gonna go for Hyrule Castle first here. As we see the small key in Saint Chest for Vex. No, Andy's saying no. He just wants more bombs. So are you going so short first then? No, he's going to Sink. Okay. I was curious why he would want to spend the time farming the extra bombs there, guys. I figured maybe he wanted to attack South Shore first early or escape, but yeah, he just wants the bombs. But if he gets that farm, now he can just go to Lost Woods rather than worry about the farm here. And Vex is kind of doing the same play as well. So you can see our runners. Uh, they've done this, I believe, in the other two games. They're just going to say no to uh, no to Lumberjacks. They do not want to see that early scout. They don't have boots uh, yet, so it's not really too relevant for them. As we see our first compass in the overall, Vex is going to go ahead and grab that. Compasses aren't bad just to kind of see the item counts and like in case you kind of forget things. Andy's actually going to grab it as well. Um, it's honestly not the worst thing to to spend time grabbing. Like if you have to dip dungeons, and it's a good way to kind of keep place of like how many items I have, etc, etc. And compasses uh, also have a very good <laughs> feature in that they actually show what the boss is as well. So they're probably picking it up for the ladder because <laughs> they want the information, but uh, yeah. Uh, 
and it'll take a little sneaky shortcut here, just dropping off the ledge. When am I getting Andy for his birthday? It's a secret, I can't tell you guys. I actually forgot to mail it. Um, I had, like, I settled on a couple of things. I was like, oh, this would be so funny if I sent him this. As the compass for Eastern Palace is found as well. Um, but I'm gonna just have to, like, DM him in instead. He's definitely watching this while back. He absolutely probably will. Or upload it or whatever. But, uh, yeah, I don't want to say too much more other than that. I want to surprise him tomorrow. The tunic music is good. It's like the calm before the storm, guys. We're going to get our first look here of Well on Vex's side. Takes a bomb hit there, so we're going to hear him. Well, we would have hear, heard him beep him if the audio was on him, but uh, it's not a big deal. Taking that hit, being one heart out, is not a big deal. Tons of pots with hearts in the area. It's your first map. It's for TR, so we now know information on TR, and we now know <laughs> information on Hyrule Castle. Uh, the Hyrule Castle map is 100% useless, as is the GT map, so... That is kind of the junk fill, I guess you can say. From, uh, from Map Encompass's standpoint. Nothing on the bottle vendor, just the heart piece. We're gonna see Chicken Coop here on Vex's side. So Vex is just a little bit ahead of Andy, and that's only because of the, uh, the bomb tree pull. Getting the extra bombs. But we'll note that uh, our runners have the exact same amount of bombs. So I feel like Vex's decision to kind of just hold on and, and farm in Lost Woods was probably the better one here. But not a whole lot to, to really speak of. Just five bucks in the back of bar. Still waiting for the excitement. <laughs> it's gonna come, guys. It's gonna it's gonna hit us, right? Who knows, it might be South Shore, it might be Sash, could be Eastern. Eastern would be kind of cool, that early lamp. So even though this is map compass shuffle, uh, the keys, both small and big, are still going to be within their home dungeons. Meaning that they're not shuffled at all. We're not going to get any surprises. We don't have to hunt down, you know, GT big key and like overworld or anything like that. Um, it's just the maps and compasses. I mean, I think I'm the most interested in this match today, too, is just to kind of see how the bosses play out, right? So I feel like that's the the main hurdle for our uh, runners to kind of get ahead of. And I say that because, like, again, yeah, they can get compasses that can tell them what the bosses are, but it's all boils down to, like, you know, which bosses are where. And if, like, you know, if they're going to require a full kit, or maybe if they can get away with some uh, items that they wouldn't necessarily need. So, say TR, for example, maybe you don't need that ice rod, right? So, it's kind of an interesting... It's an interesting mode. Just a lot of variants. Nothing in damn chest, so we're going to see what's in the actual flooded dam portion. And just a heart piece, so still nothing. Are we going to see... Who's going to Gina? Not Andy. Bex is. Okay. Bex is playing the anti-clown card. Love it. He wants to just protect himself against any shenanigans. And then Andy's going for a more traditional uh, Moldorm cave here. I, I really like a Gina here. Mainly because nothing has been found in Kakariko. Like, it's, it's, just, it's very suspiciously dry, I would say. So his chances of finding something here are actually really good right now. We see Andy get powder, more money. We see a cape, and we see a map. So nothing that's so short either. At this point, me personally, I would really be thinking about uh, <laughs> Sash immediately. Because I haven't gotten anything in CAC. I haven't gotten anything that's so short. I'm going right to... I'm going right to Sash. And we see a glove from Vex's side. So that's an interesting pull there. So the divergence pays off for him. He has anti the clown. 
But will a clown Andy? We'll have to wait and find him. Right, with that glove, Vex is going to appropriately just go to the back three. He just scored these gloves early. He's like, hell yeah, I want to ride this. And I'm going to go and flex on this advantage and check out this, uh, this check. Andy having some issues with these crabs. Once again, he's had really bad crab luck over the last few months. Um, you know, the fans of his channel, aka the, the Fandies, uh, <laughs> as we see a vanilla ice rod, would uh, would really relate to that and kind of understand that, yeah, the crabs are a bit of an issue. But yeah, Andy's scoring that ice rod in Ice Rod Cave. Alright, so yeah, Andy is going to go straight to Sash here. He's playing this really, really tight. Actually, he's getting bombs. Is he thinking Escape Room? No, he wouldn't play Escape if he has triple bombs. What are you getting the bombs for, boy? It wouldn't be for Eastern, though, right? He is going to Escape with those bombs. Interesting. Interesting. I think a bit of a misplay by Andy. But nothing, nothing too bad. My reasoning behind that is, like, he can just pull the tree and get bombs, right? Like, he knows tier one is, is bombs. And he can get himself up to seven, which would be more than enough for escape. But I suppose he just wants to play it safe. It's, uh, he loses a little bit of time by going on that walk. and loses rupees as well, but it's not, uh, it's not too terrible, honestly, right now. Vex is going to complete the trip to Ice Rock Cave, so he's not going to miss that Ice Rock. Plus, guards are on the bomb pack, too. That's actually a really good call out. So there would have been more chances. He is going to kill a lot of these guards with keys, though. But he maybe could have killed the, uh, the green guard there for a bomb pack as well. Just more maps. This, this start is actually... This is a bad start if you're a runner. Like, honestly. Like, Vex is probably feeling great with that glove. Andy, I imagine, is feeling miserable. Like, if I'm in Andy's shoes right now and I haven't found anything for 10 minutes <laughs> in map compass shuffle other than just maps and compasses, I'd probably be a little salty right now. Not saying it's throwing him off his game. I'm just saying that, you know what, I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't be too thrilled with this start. Andy going to kill the green guard there. Vex picks up his ice rod and his cave. I see another map. What is this? <laughs> it's all maps. Vex is going to go to Sash potentially. Uh, I keep saying they're going to Sash, but he might be going to the shop. He's going to the shop. Okay, so he's going to follow suit with Andy then. It's just interesting. They don't want... Oh, oh, never mind. He is going to Sash. All right. Again, just me personally, I think this is the the right call here. I really, I really do like dipping Sash at this point. And a compass. Wow. That's so bad. This this escape so bad, man. If X just like bull skips escape, he's gonna save quite a bit of time on Andy. As we see that Hera is green pendant. It's the first piece of information we've seen all seed, basically. We see a sword again. Sash K ping off again ahead of escape. It's not about rights. Vex's escape is going to be faster. Just even by bare bones having a sword. Yeah, he's having a great start. So, uh, we have Aga available. We don't have a pearl yet. If Pearl's here in Dark Cross, that means that Vex is going to have to make the trip anyways. And it's a commitment. If we see a hammer and glove here, more than likely the same scenario. Just a red ruby. Also to call out chat, with this being boss shuffle. If we get a bow here, that might not be enough. So I imagine we're going to see either Pearl or maybe further progression throughout. And with a glove lamp, that means Death Mountain is also available right now. We do see the pearl here in Eastern. Andy is going full back here. Oh my lord.
the back three play here. Little does Zany know. This is this is very similar to the uh like game two where Andy kind of dodged the flute until it was like the last thing he found in Kakriko. And he's doing more of the same now. He's gonna head over to Sash. He's gonna be able to get his sword. I imagine he changed to Eastern. Meaning that he's essentially gonna last the location uh Agina here. If Agina is, you know, required for that Dark World access for Glove. But with a, you know, a cape, a lamp, and a pearl, um, Aghanim is in logic to get to Dark World access. So I'll spawn our players on the on the pyramid once they finish Aghanim, and they'll have that Dark World portal for the rest of the game. So if we don't find anything else here, as we see the single arrow in that, uh, in that big test game, it's going to be I imagine we'll see. I imagine we'll see an early Agatha, honestly. Andy making his way into Eastern as well is going to say uh, no to skipping that. In his spot, he doesn't have much left. Uh, much like Vex. Vex does have escape still to do. Uh, if he so chooses to do it. But in Andy's case, he's already done it. So really, this is it. Uh, with not having done uh, Aghanim at all. We're going to see that Lamolus in Eastern. So in a very completable boss. Uh, in fact, they already have the requirement in a weapon. Either that ice rod or sword will be able to finish it off. And uh, Vex is going sink, so this is going to be the play to the mountain for him. Uh, we'll need to keep just a wee bit of tabs on him just to kind of see if he decides to scout the lumberjacks as well while he's here. If he's playing super, super tight, he says no. Uh, but if he wants to just like say, eh, you know, I'm already in the area, I want to just make sure, he'll go ahead and scout that now. And uh, yeah, he's just gonna play this really tight and say no. Kind of what I expect on game three, honestly. No boots, why would you check Lumberjacks? I've seen many a runner die in both regular action and in tournament lives uh, by not checking that Lumberjacks without boots. As we see boots. <laughs> so yeah, now he can check Lumberjacks. <laughs> Alright, so, you know, Lamp, Cape, Boots. Vex is probably now. Oh, I should have checked Lumberjacks, man. But you know what? Like, for him, if he doesn't find anything here, I think he full. He just full sends into Hyrule Castle, finishes that off while he does Aga. So his is going to be the better route. Not only does he have Sword for Escape versus Andy's bombs, but now he has boots as well. So he's going to save a tremendous amount of time on Andy here on the early game. And boots are, or Glove is hard locking these boots. Andy does not need to go to Agina here to get to Dark World. Right? He already has the prerequisite. So if he decides to skip Agina and just go for Aga, it's just going to put him further behind. Heart container here. Vex is going to go ahead and chain this together and scout the Lumberjacks. And yeah. Andy's going to full send here. He's going right. He's saying no to Lumberjacks. He's going right for the castle. Okay. So Andy is sending in. He wants to do Aga at this point. This is not a good start if you're a fan of Andy. And, of course, getting the uh, the magic here. This, so this is a good play to just get some extra magic for this cape. 
Um, kind of a season play, honestly, because with the magic they have, it's extremely tight to get into uh, Castle Tower. It's interesting, too, because I remember seeing Andy go to Agina, I believe, early in both uh, Game 1 and Game 2. So for him to kind of play it off on Game 3, it tells me that he's playing this like, you know, I think he's just playing this the way he would normally play a seed and he wants to play it. He's not letting it get too much into his head, I think. But he also kind of understands the stakes and the circumstances and he doesn't want to piss away time. Little does he know he has pissed away a lot of time already. But I think that's more just how the seed has kind of laid itself down and not so much his decision making. Because I'll admit, like, going to a Gina, regardless, without boots, it's a hard draw, right? So it's hard for me to find fault for him to say, you know what, yeah, he should have went to a Gina. You know? <laughs> it's really hard to, to make that, make that comment. But yeah, uh, Vex is already at Ball and Chain with those boots and sword. Uh, and not surprisingly, he's going to do this ahead of Gina just to make sure everything's okay. This is what I expect most runners to do. Gain that compass. Uh, he's gonna try and bomb. Yeah, I was gonna say that is not a good idea. He's gonna try and bomb damage, but he's on blue mail, so he takes half a heart of damage each. So that's six bombs that completely depletes his inventory. It would take forever. So, yeah, he's gonna go up and get killed by the screen guard coming up here. But, uh, it is costing him a little bit of time. I would argue this is pretty much his time save on boots and swords. So now he's again kind of even up to Andy. In, in the sense of, like, how long it's taken to do front of this game. Not so much, you know, where he's at in the seat. I still think he's ahead, right? Like, gloves and boots. <laughs> Climbing GT, I think, is uh, a much better draw here. It also gives them access to uh, Catfish as well, right? Gives them access to Zora. So, <laughs> those can definitely come in play. Now, if it were me, and this is just kind of me talking out loud, if I were in Beck's position, uh, I would honestly Hulahan and check out Zora area first because I have that glove, so I know Zora's in logic. But I know with the uh, the pearl boots, I can get everything at Zora area, so I can double water walk if the ledge is uh, is mint, and I can get the the easy look at uh, Hobo and Waterfall with uh, Jesus dashing. And I would be able to do a pretty quick too, so. But, you know, hindsight, I'm looking above both runners, so I kind of know how the items have fallen, so it's easy for me to kind of make those correct calls, right? I'm in their position. I'm probably a little bit way more nervous. And Vex is out of magic, so this is what I was talking about here on Andy's side, being a little more seasoned and getting that magic ahead of this, is now Vex is going to have to farm some magic here, so he's losing more time here. These are the things that can really come back to haunt you, Grace. Uh, because I wouldn't so, so much say it's like a, a simple blunder. Like, this is at least a minute lost. It's a very easy mistake to make, though. I would definitely... I'm definitely not trying to fault him for it. But just its uh, effects, right? Okay, so Andy is in Dark World. We're getting our first look here. Andy really wants to see something good in Pyramid, but probably not really either. Oh, God, that's the worst thing you could have seen. Actually, yeah, no. No, that's that's fine. Okay. Not trying to show bias in the commentating, guys. I'm more just thinking to myself, if he finds something like Hammer, it's going to send him up the river on the early part of this season. And we don't want to see that tonight. We want to see a nice close race. Uh, so Vex's side, so this is how the route's going to drive out now. Now this is going to shape how Andy routes versus how Vex routes. When Andy got in a dark world, he sees Hookshot. That does nothing for him. He has to go straight to pod with his kid. Okay, on Vex's side, 
now he has that hook shot. He has East Death Mountain as an option. He has West Darkwool as an option. He's got a lot of options. You can go to Podding, you can go to Quakefish, right? So, reasonably speaking, if you wanted to play this super, 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 super tight, you would go to Pod now. And the only reason I say this is that if you kind of logic it together with how he found Glove in the boots, he's got to think that there's a low chance that Andy has done that to you. Okay. So, for me, I'd be like, I want to play defensive and guard myself against that. Meanwhile, you can just kind of, if you think you're ahead, you can just kind of keep your foot on the gas and say, you know what, East Death Mountain, West Dark World, which one do I want to do, right? For me, EDM is probably the winner. Um, I would just prefer to do that in quick eight items. I'm probably going to find either a hammer glove up there, maybe something else good, I don't know. But, I don't know. We're just going to have to see how uh, how Vex kind of starts this one off. There's just quite a bit of options here. And I'm really intrigued to see what he plays. AD is not bow locked in pod. Which wouldn't stop him at this point. But it would actually, it would more guide him towards, you know what, uh, my options at Agina. So the, the key is kind of not great for him. We just need to see what's in pot here. And we need to pay attention to either a glove or a hammer coming out here. Vex approaching his Agapite here. Really quick climb for him. And Andy just continuing to pile on keys. Andy will elect to Mimic Clip here. Again, strong play. He's quite good at it. So, you know, if you've already made the commitment to come over here, especially walk it, in a pendant pod, I'll call out, uh, you're going to want to get your money's worth. So the intriguing scenario to me, at least, right, is that... If Andy is to find something big here, and it's not a hammer or glove, it might take a long time for Vex to get over here. If nothing's in pod, it's not necessarily bad. Because, you know, there's pros and cons to whatever Andy finds here. But it's, uh, I would say it's not great either. Just because of the time spent. All right. Vex is going to see his hook shot here. We see a heart container in the left side chest. Need to pay attention to Vex real quick here, guys. He's going to stay in Death Mountain. Or he's going to stay in Dark World. Where does he go in Dark World, though? That is the question. And he's going north. This is not surprising. He's going to play off pod. Many will argue, and I'm probably one of them as well. This is the right plate. Skipping Quakefish as well. Ooh, interesting. This is this is some tight gameplay from Vex here. This is some tight gameplay from Vex. I would actually not expect him to make this play. This is something I would expect from top eight. This is actually a really good play, I feel. This is like someone playing like they want to win. This is this is the good stuff here. All right, Andy, what are you going to find here? Just bombs. Ten bombs in the tear pin chest. So again, to kind of continue to call out, it is map compass shuffle, so Pod has more chances of items. Still needs to place those uh, seven keys. But it's a 14 chest dungeon, so. We have all three small keys, so everything else is available now. See that big key in the harmless hallway. Vex is getting a small key here in the back portion of Skull Woods. Electing to go Skull first here. I don't mind it because you don't have traditional Dark World access. 
uh, with a Glover hammer. We see flippers. That could be huge. That could be huge. And that puts him into Zora area, which he know he doesn't know yet is was in logic before the climb. Vex finding red cane in Skull Woods as well. Skull Woods being a crystal, as indicated by the tracker. Or not the tracker, sorry, the uh, screen here. And blue cane as well. Andy, where are you going? Sees this stun pack as red rupees. This is really good for him. Now he's going to be able to methodically farm his money for Zora. Zora, of course, requiring 500 rupees. And he's going to be able to kill, like, one-hit enemies, preferably, to be able to get to a situation where he can buy out Zora. Vex finding the big key in the in the uh, pinball room. That's really gross. For just a small key in the big chest. So, unsurprisingly, we're seeing Andy elect to check the flipper checks immediately. Because, you know, at this point, in his mind, he's thinking, you know what? I made the right play. I went to Agina when I did, or I went to Aga when I did. I didn't play Agina. I got rewarded with uh, flippers and pots, so it's got to be here, right? I will say this again. It is in his, it is in, like, he doesn't know it yet, but the best thing for him to happen is to find nothing <laughs> from the flippers. We see Andy deciding to kill the dancing pickles here as well. Get some more money. We see Bombos here in the uh, chess game. There's a lot of items Andy could get that are tremendous here, and there's a lot of items Andy can get that are not good for him here. Meanwhile, Vex is in Village of Outcast right now, cleaning it out. We did not see anything good through this Village of Outcast. We did see some value in Skull Woods. We'll repeat that highlight of Red Cane in Skull Woods. Uh-oh, Vex is having a little bit of issues. Having a little bit of issues. It's okay, we'll get back to him. That sprite is in a very peculiar spot, guys. <laughs> God, I feel like he, uh, he kind of died a little there. He'll come back, guys. Oh, there we go. See, there we go. There we go. And he's just getting 300 bucks. Mega Man showing mega ass. Uh, sort of. Sort of. Andy is going to get this compass for information. But now, Andy will know there's not... Well, actually, no. Sorry, chat. No, I, I, I forgot this call out. Flipper's hookshot means, you know, Death Mountain. No, it means it means North Dark World. And he's putting out that hookshot. He's going North Dark World. He's putting off the glove further now. I forgot about that with the flippers. Oh, no. Oh, no, chat. Chat. This is this is Andy's nightmare here. He doesn't know it yet, but it's his nightmare. Oh, that's unfortunate. I actually I actually forgot about those this connection with flippers and hookshot. Uh yeah, so Andy is gonna go ahead, yeah, and play the North Dark World, much to Vex, but again, Vex is gonna enjoy that uh, that advantage of having the of having the boots. Okay, guys, give me one second. I'm just going to refresh Vax here. This works. Nope. Give me one sec, guys. There we go. We got Vex back. Okay. Give me a sec, guys. I'll get it back on there for you. So we were going to... We are going to miss a bit of Vex, unfortunately. Due to that. Uh, 
These things happen, guys. There we go. Alright, Vex is back. You found powder in Thieves' Town? Thank you for the call. Alright, Vex is back, guys! Woo! Uh, appears just by the timing alone, only did the front four thieves as well. I already know that just based on the amount of time he was down for. There's no way he finished all thieves in that time. And he also has powder. Check. Anybody has Ray Kane aim. Uh, we see, hold on, hold on, guys. Skull ice for the fat berries. And I believe TR was a pendant. Correct me if I'm wrong. Please do. Actually, no, we know all the pendants. No, we don't. I'm just an idiot. TR was a crystal? Okay. These things happen, guys. Did Vex just... Did he just go to find out what the red crystals were when he already saw them on the map? <laughs> did, did I just see that? Okay, more information from Vex here. And you have that red cane as well. I'm looking now. If box, heart piece, red ruby. And he has small key here, big key to small. Vex is SMQ. Is this the mountain play? It's the mountain play. Okay. So, guys, I chatted a little bit with uh, Vex on the side uh, this afternoon, right? Just talking a little bit about yesterday's match. And uh, he did confirm that, yeah, it was a bit of a it was a bit of a hiccup there with the mountain. It's kind of last location in those, uh, those boots through Dark World. Also stated that he really hates Ambrosia, and I don't blame him. <laughs> I don't blame him at all. All right, so we're going to see our first look at Paradox Cave on Vex's side. Andy is going to continue on through uh, death, uh, Dark World here. So if all we've seen is Powder, Andy will run out of logical things to do. And guys, if you think he rolled his eyes to Texas uh, with that flute in game two, um, he's giving me a bonus Aries by the time that uh, his iris is returned back uh, back center. Yeah, he's going that far south with his eye roll today. We see Titan Mitts on the mountains. So we do see Dark World access point. But a powerful one in Titans, especially in the mountain here. So that's going to give Vex an additional option here, an option to kind of go ahead into uh, Dark World Death Mountain. So he will follow up with Spike Cape first and then be able to play that after. Doesn't have any access point to Hera. The Appendant Dungeon, probably not his uh, most ideal or sought after check anyways. So he'll probably end up going into Dark World Death Mountain after this uh, Spiral Cave. Barring any kind of mishap or mistake, right? Yeah, we already know that Andy, unless he goes and does full thieves and finds something, we know that Andy eventually will have to go to Agena at this point. Ether here from Vex. I believe a Bombos Andy should already have as well. Just based on where uh, where things have gone. Thieves Town is a crystal as well. And Vex is going to make his way to Dark World Death Mountain here. Okay. So pivotal point in this matchup. Does Andy continue on into back four of Thieves? My guess, and this is kind of, this could be what Vex did as well. And this is what I'm assuming is going to happen. Oh no, he sees that as a boss. So maybe Vex has Thieves Town done as well. If it's Moldorm, I believe Vex, Vex might have just beaten it and left. He definitely could have done that within the time that the stream was frozen for. There's ten arrows and red boomerang for Vex. Okay. So nothing so far in Dark World Death Mountain, but yeah, we see the one-eyed Moldorm. I wasn't going to say anything else, guys. This is a quasi-family-friendly cast. 
I'm allowed like five swear words on the stream. Now other broadcasts are like, you get one, I get five, guys. I've uh I've kind of opened it up for me. It's not a penis, right? It's not a guys, no. Chat no. Quick for TR entry. Didn't see anything there in the hookshot cave first chest. I'm pretty sure Vex has Thieves Down done. It's just a, it, it was a really unfortunate time for a stream to kind of have some issues. Or it could have been just Twitch. I, I usually blame Twitch. Oh, he does have Thieves? Thank you, guys. Okay, so that's kind of what I expected. Andy is going to continue on to Thieves here. This makes a lot of sense for him because, again, he still doesn't have Dark World access, doesn't have a single glove. He doesn't have a lot of things. Doesn't have a lot of things. Meanwhile, Bex is going to beeline straight to King's Tomb here. And gets a hammer. Oh my goodness. Big find, guys. That's a big find. So with the hammer, that's just going to open up pretty much the whole game for Vex here. Meanwhile, Andy's still kind of wallowing away in extremely limited circumstances of how he's kind of routing it out. And while I would say that, you know, boss shuffle is the great equalizer here. That is slowly going away. The good news is... I say this is good news. Andy won't find Glover or Hammer. So, again, he'll have to go to Agena. Once he does, like, the... Hype Cave route. Post Thieves. Has to. There won't be anything left for him to do. Essentially, both gloves, hammer, and boots were all locked behind that one glove. That's just sick. However, as Andy gets book here, that's actually another big call out. So Andy has some interesting items here that Vex doesn't have, right? Is book and flippers. Vex is going back into thieves, though. This is a head scratcher. He's going back to thieves. Huh. Oh, maybe he hasn't done the boss then. Is chat lying? No, he's not lying. Has he done all of thieves? See, this is kind of the problem with not having full visual and not being able to confirm. He's just doing the back of thieves. Okay. It is map compass. This is this just seems overly tight to me. I call it a head scratcher because I score hammers. I have bombos. I'm thinking ice palace. That being said, he doesn't have flippers, so maybe he's trying to play within logic as much as possible. Yeah, this is mm, this is a surpriser to me. This is probably the first surprise I've seen this see. I don't hate it. Uh, again, like, you know, very rarely will I ever call, you know. In randomizer, guys, a lot of things that you do are very, like, at face value and are very, like, to one's taste, right? And while a lot of people will try to tell you, yeah, there's, there's wrong plays... Uh, I will probably argue against that, and most times the wrong play is only known until after the seed, right? There's definitely plays where you're like, ah, oh, man, I should have done that, and you get you get like kind of thrashed by it. Um, but at this point, like again, I'm not really thinking too much. But if something's here in big chest, though, uh. 
This is gonna be a very long cast, guys. This is gonna be a very long broadcast. It's a mushroom. Oh my god. Oh my. Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> oh, does he go right to mush? I think he might. He's dashing south. Is he going? Yeah, he's gonna go cash this in right away. No, he's skipping right past it. Where's he? Go? Oh, desert. We see desert is a crystal. There's a quick map, but not quick enough for me. Meanwhile, Andy's making the same play to desert. <laughs> he uh, he's probably going Agina first in this circumstance. He's gonna get that glove. It's been a long time since I've seen a one-sided start with this. It's been a very long time. There's zero chance Andy would skip this. Alright, so Andy finally gets his first glove here. And I say finally because Vex has had this glove for 40 minutes on Andy. Don't ask me how long he's had the boots for because it's almost just as bad. But it's still a one-to-one -one, uh, crystal game, guys. That being said... And he's got a lot of ground to cover here. And his main saving grace is twofold. Uh, one, seeing that big key in the map chest. That's actually good for Andy in this circumstance. Uh, that half magic is bad because now that's just another thing Vex is going to have on Andy. But uh, I don't think it'll really matter so much in the course of the race. But it's going to allow Andy to keep up on Crystal Count here. And be able to full clear the dungeon minus that torch, of course. So that's kind of protecting him a little bit. But yeah. Andy, uh, probably not feeling good about that glove. <laughs> He's going to feel bad when he sees the boots, though. We see that Desert is the... Desert boss is blind today. Honestly, a very easy boss in here. Especially with their kit. They got, like, all the trimmings. Lots of easy bosses so far. Kind of makes me wonder for the late game. Uh, so I guess the kind of the way to kind of split this race away so far is uh, the main call. It says Andy did do Pendant Pod upon entering into Dark Mill through Paga. Found his flippers in the back of Dark Maze. Uh, and Vex was able to find his glove early in Agina, uh, which turned into a pair of boots, which was extremely nice. Uh, at Old Man. And then that glove boot combo, more the glove, not the boot, led to Dark Bolt that found him. With the Titans being found in East Death Mountain, Dark Bolt Death Mountain leading to, I think, another. Dalian. Actually, I don't even think anything was in Dark Wolf at the moment. But yeah, then Hammer and Titan in uh, King's Tomb. So. Just a rather rough go for Andy in this one. Vex making his uh, way quite quickly to the back of the desert here. Again, just going to kind of highlight the differential between having boots and not having boots. It's almost like an unfair handicap, honestly. And something that you'll always highlight, so if you ever watch, like, bigger races or, like, ladder races, and you can kind of, you know, scoop out who the opponent is, and they might not be as seasoned as the uh, their opponent, you'll kind of see these differences where maybe they're not dashing as much or they're dashing, dashing ineffectively. Well, Vex to highlight, once again, he's a 129 runner. He's dashing quite well throughout the seed. So he's making these boots sing right now. So you remember when I said blind is easy in desert? I kind of like because the script's a little off. They have a blue cane, and he has half magic to his name, too, so he'll be fine. And flying goes down quite handily. Vex taking the 2-1 lead temporarily for uh, crystal number two, but Andy is pretty much right on his heels.
The only other gnome boss that we know of that uh, may or may not be a crystal or eastern palace is uh, Lemol's worms are there. Are there. Again, another easy boss. So we haven't really seen more difficult bosses. Bex is going to go ahead and check in this mushroom. If you're a fan of Andy, guys, you're hoping for nothing here. Uh, if you're a fan of good races, you're also hoping for nothing here. Because boy howdy is Andy cooked if there's something here. And he also gets his second crystal here in Desert. Alright, guys. What will Vex find here at the Potion Lady? Finds a map. Andy is still alive. All right, now Vex is heading towards Village of Outcast again. Uh, he does have Hammer Peg Smith Purple Chest without uh, Mirror available. He also will have North Dark World into Quakefish available. Not an ideal route at all. So I imagine how he wants to play this is he's going to do Hammer Pegs probably into Quakefish Pod here. When did Vex get boots? Vex got boots about 13 minutes in. Andy is just about to get his boots here. And, uh... Let out one of his Andy. Fox! He, he definitely let one out. So much so that if Kelsey was streaming, you probably would have heard it. I don't know if she actually is. Don't check, guys. It's fine. Um, okay, what are we going to see here from Hammer Pegs? He is going to take the Smith as well. So, unless he finds Mirror here, this will end up into a SQ scenario. Bandy going exactly where he should be going at this point is the Smith Mountain. He doesn't, again, have much left. She's out to dinner. Okay, so if, like, Kelsey was still streaming on her phone at, like, an eatery, you know, like, a mile and a half away, you probably still would have heard him say, Fuck! I need to protect my joke, guys. All right. All right, so Andy's going to get his Titans here. He will play this in the Spiral in Dark World Death Mountain. He might actually skip Spiral at this point. He might actually skip Spiral. In the context of how late he got that glove and boot, he knows he's severely... He severely kind of misread at this one. Alright, Vex cashing in. That's right, he had Powder. So he's going to cash in Smith for nothing. He's going to do Powder here as well. Well, if he's climbing, that tells me he's going to do Spiral though. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and do Spiral. I think he's probably just limiting the damage at this point. He doesn't want to give it away for free, right? Like, he knows he's behind. He 100% he knows he's behind. He doesn't want to give anything away for free. So, like, the following plays for Andy, honestly, are out at this point. Uh, he's got... Like... Bat, Smith, Purple Chest... These big chests. These are the things that are just not interesting to him right now. Once he sees that hammer. I believe this is going to be the Ice Palace play for Vex. Unless he's going to break Zora area. And he is. Okay. Is it for Ice though? Or is it for Zora stuff? It's for Zora stuff. Okay, so I think this is Vex's first mistake here. 
And the reason why I'm going to call it out as a mistake, guys, is he has full clearance of ice. The only thing holding him back is the flippers. But he knows it's a crystal, right? So at that point, if I was breaking logic, if I'm in that crossroads, right? So it's kind of like a flow chart in your head, right? This is how I'll explain it. If I'm breaking sequence for something, and I'm breaking sequence for either overworld, or I'm breaking sequence for a dungeon, if that dungeon is a crystal, I want to prioritize that over the overworld. I will also couple with the fact that Ice is a significantly faster dungeon with Icebreaker as well. So I'm not really losing that much. Uh, if I get myself in that sense of, well, I could be wasting all my time full clearing it. And we might see him actually double back at Ice here as well. He might make the play to Ice. No, he's going to he's gonna say no for now. So I think the big also tip it that we still have yet to find out is if Swamp is a crystal or pendant. Okay, and he's going to go right to King's Tomb here. Again, there's not much left for him. Swamp is a pendant? Oh, that's awful. Potentially. So we know the other crystal. Chat, you guys are the MVP today. You guys are the actual... Bros. All right, Andy getting his hammer immediately. Andy just beelines the ice here, right? Bonk rocks first. He's gonna do bonk rocks as Vex getting his 300 from shore. He's gonna do bonk rocks to lumberjacks, S and Q to ice at this point. Now, Vex has a conundrum, and by him staying here, it's telling me already all I need to know. He's going to go to Ice next. This is such a good call by Vex. This is a strong call. This is not overcommitting the logic. This is knowing I have a clearable uh, dungeon ahead of me. I might as well do it now. It's a really good play. Okay, so, of course, Vex has Bombos. Going to use that for the entry to, into ice. And Andy is going to follow suit and go right into ice as well. Chad, as stupid as, as this sounds, and you're going to laugh at me, we're pretty much tied. <laughs> pretty much time you guys are talking about like oh my god andy andy needs a miracle at this point he doesn't need a miracle guys he's like right with facts here this is this is brackets all right this isn't some you know uneven matchup of any sort these are two very skilled runners and much like the other two games and this is why i highlighted it that this is a very good matchup these guys have been more more or less on top of each other the whole race. And I will argue what you're seeing as the difference here is just Vex having boots for much longer than Andy. Vex has also done some extra checks that Andy has not done. But it's put them both on the same path right now. So I would say if anything, Vex has been a little unlucky in circumstances like that mushroom not getting into anything. Because that mushroom could have been massive for him. If mushroom had anything, it's like game over. And he's ahead with the flippers. That's unknown at this point to me. But you are right. Like, he does have those flips. So, of like the, the things they didn't have to do, Andy has the advantage there. So, you are right. We're pretty dry on what we can do remaining, right? So I feel like at this point, with Quake being TR, or not having Quake yet, we're going to find something here, guys. We're going to find something here, guys. Can't finish Paw, can't finish Eastern, even if it is Paw Shuffle, can't finish it. Completely bow locks, both dungeons. Hera is 
the last option I can think of. And we see a mirror. Okay. Okay. Bex scoring the mirror here in Ice-T. This is big. Okay, so this is going to drive the route. How behind does Andy think he is? If Andy thinks it's like do or die at the, at 57 in, depending on what else we find here, by the way, as we feel, see a Master Sword as well. Bex has not got that. He will grab that shortly. Um, This is going to drive Andy's route. And with that time commitment going to pod and only getting flippers and then finding this mirror here, does he overcommit to, to swamp? And if he does, what does he hope to find? Is it a bow? Is it a firearm? I imagine, you know what? I want to find that bow if I'm Andy. So buckle up, guys. I think we're going to get into a really, really neat situation here. What I don't expect to happen is Vex go to pod at this point. What I expect Vex to do is maybe explore those mirror lock locations. Because he doesn't have access to Swamp. So, where do you go with that mirror? I feel the most ideal candidate for Vex is probably Hera. You know, it's a pendant dungeon, it sucks. But, in the overall scheme of the seed, it's a very late location. Uh, depending on where that hammer and that mirror were. And pot can be bow locked, right? So it's not it's not as ideal as Andy's situation. Andy's was forced to go to that pot location, right? I think we're gonna see Hera from Vex. We see both our runners going through Cold Surf. Both of them having some pretty difficult times with the fight, even with Red Mail here. Uh, Vex electing to use the cape. This is the right call here. Play it safe. He's on two hearts. Can survive the next hit, but will not survive another. Andy also having a bit of trouble there. Uh, but is able to get in a good rhythm there with the hammer. And both our runners are going to get the crystal at more or less the same time. What a great, what a great series, guys. What an amazing series this has been. Guys, I've been watching Rando, and I've been in the Rando community. I've commentated a lot of matches. This is one of the best series I've seen. Now you might say that and you might like, nah, Solski, like these races haven't been that close. I mean, like, it's been like one decision each game. One small thing. One small thing. Alright, and Bex is gonna elect to go to Hera here. I feel in his circumstance it's the right call. Andy? Andy? Are you doing what I think you're gonna do? You're cheeky. You're not no. Oh, he's doing it. He's going to... He's going to Quake Fish. I like this play. Okay, so Andy is going to go ahead to Quake Fish. Uh, did not have Glove forever. And knows in his head... Well, shit. My opponent might have had Glove on the Aga entry into Dark World. So may have done Quake Fish. So at this point in the race, this is extremely smart for Andy to check. This is defense 100%. What do we get? Just a heart container. He's going to say no. He's got red mail and uh, what appears to be 10 hearts. <laughs> He's going to just say no. I have enough. That's 40 hearts, essentially, in this game. We see the big key early on in Hera. Andy, Andy, where are you going here? Why is he... Oh! Okay, this red is interesting. He wants to clean up. I'm sup... I'm, honestly, guys, I'm actually surprised he's playing this safe. I am very surprised he's playing this safe. That being said, <laughs> he knows Swamp Palace Pendant and Hera Pendant are his options coming up. So, it's not as surprising. That being said... I would expect him to almost go to Swamp. Oh no, not not again, Vex. Not again. Come back to me. You guys, give me one sec. Let me refresh the stream here. 
<laughs> we're gonna miss we're gonna miss some of her again guys it looks like his stream ended again there we go it's back up all right we see a moth at hera uh you guys might not see it here hold on guys i'm gonna call the action blind as i fix this uh just defeat a moth there let's see what they get just a boomerang Okay. Why is that not back? Hold on. Hold the phone, guys. What is going on? Hold on. Let me close this out. Let's try this again. So, guys, we have some technical difficulties. Alright, Bex is going to go ahead and do the... Let's try this. There we go, that worked. Okay. That was the magic, just switch to something else. Alright, we're back, guys. He is going to do hair basement here. It'd be fantastic if his stream doesn't go down anymore, because that... <laughs> It's not easy to fix. Because it's like a straight stream drop, so I have to refresh a bunch of stuff, unfortunately. Okay, so Andy, you're going to go ahead and check purple chest. This is something we haven't seen yet. We haven't seen really... Guys, help me out. If we've seen anything in Hera from Bex's side, maybe on another broadcast. Oh, 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 that's gross. Oh, that's, that's flashbacks to... Oh, that's flashbacks to Jet and Structural Mike. That's the fire rod in her basement. Oh, and Andy's going to go to Swamp here 100%. Oh, my God. Hey, Solsky, Vex found the fire rod in her basement. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, God. Guys, you know how, like, you'll watch, like, a... You remember back in, like, the, the mid to late 2000s? I guess earlyish mid 2000s when it was, like, poker was, like, huge, right? And you'd have these broadcasts, and it would show the math of, like, the hands and everything like that. Andy's riding on the 5% right now. He's on the 5%. And honestly, him going to bat here gives me faith. Because I deadass thought he was going to go straight to the swamp. And he's saying, no, Solsky, you suck. I'm not making that call. But does he, though? Bex is smartly going to go ahead and play on to Skull Woods now. Andy, where are you going? Andy, where are you going? Okay, never mind. He's just going to go to swamp instead. 5%, guys. <laughs> I think at this point, guys, this is why it's 5%. Andy really needs to find a bow here in Swamp. If he does not find a bow here in Swamp, uh, probably going to be Curtains. If he finds bow here in Purple Chest, probably going to be Curtains because this is an easy in for Vex to route in after he does uh, Moth here. Oh, we need Flute as well. That's a good call out, actually. That's a great call out. Uh, question chat, is it progressive bows? Yes, it is. Yep, so Andy, you're going to go ahead and check out Bombos here. What do you find here at Bombos, Andy? Guys, I am seeing the uh, the subscriptions in chat, by the way. I don't have alerts on, but I really appreciate the support, guys. Thank you so much. Nothing at Bombos. So we are going to see Swamp Palace here from Andy. Honestly, this is, this is the right play for him at the right time. For what he has and what he's committed to, this is the right play. We see Blind here at Skull Woods, man. This is gross. Uh, again, an easy fight considering Vex has half magic. So Blue King can get utilized pretty pretty well here. 
But this should be the last time we see blind. I don't believe it's chaos boss shuffle. I think it's just full. If I remember the rules correctly. So that means that this is the last time we'll see blind. Since we've already seen one copy of them. Andy in the entering swamp. Alright, it's do or die, pug boy. We see the flute on Moth. Bex again getting these chain routes. That that's so good for him. That opens up Mire Shed area. That opens up Checkerboard. Opens up Mire. Mire in an MC boss shuffle situation. Oh, it's an no brainer to go over. We still need Quake. We still need Bow for go mode. Eastern is a crystal. Quake is required entry for TR. Quake, if it's Quake entry for Mire, we're going to find that very soon. Is it here in Swamp? Is it in Mire area? We'll have to wait and find out. And he, meanwhile, desperately in Swamp at this point. Some would say on life support. But if he hits here in Swamp, it's going to be so big. And he doesn't know it's big. But it's going to be massive. Bex cashing in his loot. This is game three action, guys. The winner of this match is going to progress on further into the brackets. The, uh, the loser, unfortunately, is going to have to go home here. And not so much, like, move their home or anything like that. They're going to just, like, not play the tournament anymore. Uh, all right. So, Vex. No! Vex, stop! Please! <laughs> you're you're killing me here, dude. Ah! <laughs> God. <laughs> Chat. <laughs> I'm getting trolled here. Chat. I'm getting trolled. Vex has gone to Myershed. I missed Myershed, guys. <laughs> oh, I missed Myershed. No, I don't want to change Andy's capture. There we go. There we go. See, checkerboard is just a heart piece. Anything good on this tracker? That's a good call out. Nothing. No bow, no quake. Andy, left side, sees Big Key. Bex is going in. Bombos is the medallion for Meyer. Does have access. Andy with just a heart container in the left side of Swamp. That's it. Woo! This is a seed. All right, guys, so again, a gentle reminder with Map Cup and Shuffle, we do have more items here in Mire. Mire is a very key he heavy dungeon with uh, four keys being available here. So that means that of the four, normally it'd only be a two item dungeon, but because of Map Cup and Shuffle, it now opens up to potentially a four item dungeon. Basic math, I know, it's awesome. Andy, map, sunken chest. Quake, found in swamp! Huge! Huge! Oh my! Andy on his way to Pendant Argus. Vex is gonna go over to Spike Chest over here in Meyer. What is he gonna find? Small key. This game sucks, guys. <laughs> This game sucks. Andy hitting the 5%er. It's back. Guys, this is 50-50. It's back, guys. It's back. The bad news? Andy now has entry into, into TR. Blue cane strats on Argus. Melting them. Tempered Sword. 
Nice. He's back in it, guys. This race is once again so close. Bex's not finding anything in Mire. We have that shovel Andy for Andy in the pocket. <laughs> Andy, dude, he's he's pumped, dude. I can tell with that spin speed. He's like, I saw like eight diagonal movements or eight directional movements to try to avoid that. He is gaming right now, guys. Beck's gonna go in shed and show us what's in chat and um cutscene. This is such a close race. What does the shovel reveal? Just a heart piece. We still have big boy TR open. TR is huge right now. And Andy is going to float there. The race at this point in time is going to be determined by two things. One, when does Vex go to Pendant Pod to get his flippers? Two, when does Andy go to Hair Basement to get his fire rod? He's going towards Hera first and Spike Cave. He's going to say no to Spike Cave. going to head on over to Hera. The reason I say this, guys, is he's going to be able to get this compass here. But he's also going to be able to check out Ether. Now he has that pocket option to go to Hera. Does Andy play Hera Basement with TR Looming? That's a big call out here. With Andy going Mirror Side, it's almost for sure that he's going to play Hera. He might surprise us here and skip. He's going to go in. So this is this is a very... This is a critical spot in the race, guys. It won't immediately sink him if he skips the basement. Depending on TR's logic, he might not even need the fire rod to be TR. He might be able to get all the way over. And he's setting up for his hair pot here. Vex entering in the basement portion of Mire. Nothing in Mire. But there is a crystal waiting here for Vex. Vex is full geared at this point too. We'll call out. Vex does not need anything as he activates Spooky here. He will not need anything to be able to beat a boss. So even if Trinex is here, he'll be able to defeat it. And this is where half magics actually might come into play is some of these more magic heavy dungeons he'll be better equipped to face than andy and with gt looming a trinex and ice <laughs> in the ice floor at armos will be so bad for him as we see the moth in mire this is an auto click for vex <laughs> he is just hammering this guy right now how'd that little guy get in there right we see the moth in Hera. That's right, because I missed it with the with the stream going down. All right, so that's two moths. So moths are out, blinds are out. We see one Armos. We see one Lamo. Or no, of one Lamo. Hmm. Misery Mire was a complete waste of time, but but guys, we got a crystal. And he's going back in. Vex almost, almost made a mistake with his Super NT. Oh. This is so close, guys. Vex, what's your play, buddy? What are you going to do next? This is... This is going to be... It's going to be Delge of Outcast area. Where is he gonna go with this? He's gonna check the mirror locations, guys. He got he has purple chests in the mirror locations. So this is time Andy spent that now he's gonna get back on Vex. The further Vex puts off this pendant pod, the more time Andy's gonna be able to catch up here. Andy is down two crystals. So if Vex went right to pod, he's not in the driver's seat. But he's so well along. But now, playing the overworld, playing purple chest, 
has graveyard and has uh, K45 to investigate. Which one does he go for? He goes for K45 here. And he has the fire rod. He's going to be heading over to TR. Now is also fully geared up. Is not in go mode yet. We do need a bow for go mode, guys. Bow is required to be able to defeat the boss at Eastern. By rights of the uh, the bow puzzle still being there. With the red Igors. If I'm a betting man, guys, bows and TR at this point. From what we've seen, bows and TR. Have we seen a bottle yet, chat? Someone correct me. Have we seen a bottle yet? I don't think we've seen a bottle. That's so gross. <laughs> That's so gross, chat. If a bottle leads to that bow, oh my god. That's probably the latest cash in I'll ever see for like for fetch at this stage of the race. That's crazy. <laughs> and yeah, Dex is taking a very similar path to here than Andy. Uh, K45 purple chest into Bombos. But doesn't have the option to go to uh, Swamp. Doesn't have flippers. He's going back in the dark world. Why? Is he going to dash the pod? That's a mistake he is. Where is he going? Is it going back to Graveyard? No, he's going to head to Pod here. Pyramid Fairy, you're right. This is Pyramid Fairy, 100%. There's no way he dashed the pod. Guys, my rule of thumb is the runner always knows what they're doing. 99 out of 100 times. If I said the runner is wrong 99 out of 100 times, I mean they're right on. <laughs> 99 out of 100 times. I think my my brain just had a moment. Okay, Andy. Andy. It's just... It's just the chain chops, dude. It's just the chain chops. Small key. Had to be. To be able to get through in TR. This is a big check here for Vex. Because this could be bow to flips to go. Do we see a bow here? We see a, our first bottle! Is Vex going to go pod or is he going to go quake fish here? Chat is sweating right now. The Fandy's in chat. Vex is mirroring. He's going to check this bottle. This is such a weird mirror position. He was going to go to pod at that point, so he's not going to play Quakefish. He was about to dash the pod. That's why he's cutting it off, because he knows he can just flute to five, and he might as well cash in this bottle first. He's like, is that my first bottle? What do we got? Bombs. Bow's in TR. Bow is in TR confirmed. Massive. Dex hanging over the pod. Guys, gentle reminder, Vex is still up two crystals here. He's still up two crystals. This is anyone's game at this point. Flute was off of Ma was off of blind in uh at Skull Boss. Picking up Kiki here, gonna be heading over to pod entry. And flippers were so late too. Flippers were so late here. Both runners have not checked Spike Cave yet. Oh, Vex did? Okay, I might have missed that with uh, stream stuff. Okay, so Spike Cave is out. Green pen and cash in. Mm, maybe. Maybe? Red Rupee. Hmm. 
Can you do in rollers? Small key. Had to be. So small key will be in the laser bridge portion. So we know three chests potentially will have items. We know that Trinex will, or the boss at Trinex will have one item. But guys, I'm going to eliminate the suspense for you. <laughs> TR is the last play available today. That could have the bow. So our first bow will be here in TR. And then it just becomes a race. Because in Beck's situation, when he finds these flippers here, he's going to go straight to Swamp, as he's already done all the fl other flipper stuff. Laser Bridge. Bow! Bound! Andy still has to do the last chest here. He needs to get the small key to be able to find the boss. Andy is not in go mode yet, guys. Andy still needs to make that trip. Still needs to make that trip to Moth. There is no way he does not go to Moth first. In Skullwoods. Now I say Moth in the boss position. I don't mean it as in the boss is going to be there as Moth. Just that he needs to, he will make that play being first lane. This is such a tight race, guys. I want to say... Ah, oh, this is such a hard call. I want to say... Andy's ahead by a hair. But it's like... I'm really not sure of that bad. I think this one's going to come down to GT route. And what happens in GT. I think 100% that's what's going to happen. In Andy's position without half magic, honestly, I would not fault him for getting a, a potion here. 100%. And the reason why I say this, guys, I've seen a lot of runners falter with magic management in GT Climb and in Ice Basement. It is honestly, he doesn't really... This is it's the smartest thing he can do right now. But he doesn't have a bottle. <laughs> he doesn't have a bottle, guys. He doesn't have that safe play. Vex does. Vex also has half magic, though, right? So these are the things that can really come into play in this late segment. These runners are playing for their tournament lives. This is game three action uh, with a 1 1 score between both runners. And Andy is going straight to Skull. So Andy will get the loot at Moth and be in go mode first. Vex. Did Vex get flips? Did he get flips, Jack? He did not get flips yet. He streamed out again. No, he didn't die. Uh, wait, what? No, it's it's back. What is happening here? Guys, what am I... What am I watching? He's going for Quakefish. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, Vex. You're so close. Oh, this is Tournament Nerves at its peak. Vex is going to play the overworld ahead of Pod Maze. Oh, no, guys. I think he forgot that he didn't do this and he's panicking. Oh, no. This is this is not what you want to see at the stage in the race. Andy now with a tremendous advantage. Guys, this isn't a logic mistake. This isn't logic, okay? He knows the logic, guys. These are good run I'm going to remind chat right now. These are good runners of the game. All right. This is not a, a circumstance where he's just like making it. We know it's a mistake. But I feel like what happened here. Oh, he's setting up for that current jump. He didn't have a good current jump in game two. Does he get it here? No. These are the nerves, guys. Off moth. That's actually blind. Gonna get those near or blue. I can't even talk. He's in go mode. Current jump from Vex. There we go. He's gonna head on over to Quakefish. And I don't think he has anything left other than Pod back at this point. I 
Quake. Maybe was... is he thinking maybe Bo's here? Maybe is he thinking Quake's here? Like, oh man, it's so tough to sell. I 100% don't think it's any kind of logic. Guys, there's no logic stuff to the conversation here. This is just... This is essentially a panic, okay? This is essentially a panic. What I think might have happened... It was, it was like an oh shit moment. I have this available. He's gonna see the heart container from Wakefish here. Gotta go back to pod, right? I don't think he has anything left. He's going back to the village of Outcast. What does he have left here? Did he skip the second chest here? Guys, he's not going to check Ped through Skullwoods. Like, he might, but he should logic out with Bow. Like, he only has Bow locked, right, guys? Potentially flippers. So for him, Ped is dead. Ped is 100% dead for him. He must have skipped this chest. Yeah, he skipped this chest. That's what he's going back for. I have made this mistake so many times. I don't know if it's it's truthfully a mistake for him, but I've made this mistake so many times for getting this chest. So that's a rough walk to go back. This is again, guys, this is this is kind of heartbreaking, right? Like I feel for him here. thinks he got all the items in pod. Yeah. It's it's panic and a mistake, yeah. Okay, this is really unfortunate. He doesn't know how close he is to this. That's an unfortunate way for this race to end. This is this is over, guys. This is over. I feel like every runner has been down this road before. Like every runner has been down this road. Where you, there's just like, there's one thing that can just throw you off, right? And just from my experience, I've made numerous mistakes where I've forgotten something, mistracked something in my head, um, forgotten things. So. You know, again, these things happen, guys. Even to the very best. Andy, extremely last locationing. This big key. <laughs> Is there something that Vex can do? No. Like, with his pauses here, he knows he has everything done. He knows he has everything done here. He doesn't know at this point, right? So these are like, this is what happens. When this happens, you always have these moments of like, oh God, I hope it's here or else I'm screwed. 
And that was the moment in Back of Skull, right? Because that was the moment he's like, oh god, I forgot this, or I skipped this, right? Then you go back to it, it's not there, and then, like, panic just, like, overcomes you. And you're, like, trying to think straight on what you can still do. But you're, like, you're not quite sure to do it. You know the time's ticking down, you know you're idle, you know you're not moving. And it's, like, it's killing you right now. Right? And that's what's happening. Again, guys, like, again, it's happened to every runner. And he's setting up for Spooky here. He is going to go back to Pod. Yeah, so I think he's just going to go ahead and just full clear the rest of Pod. Realizing probably he did make that mistake. And that's sometimes what would happen, right? It's like, sometimes you just have to sit there for a couple seconds and just, like, think about things. But unfortunately, it's going to be a little too, little too late. So each one of these races, guys, has come down to kind of a, a decision, right? Or I don't want to call it an accident, but we'll call it a... We'll call it a... How should I put this? A moment. Okay. Game tune, most notably, was... You know... Bex's decision to full clear Meyer. And do left side. Andy was able to... You know, they were neck and neck. Andy was able to kind of swing away with that one. And now, unfortunately, this one was just the mistaken pod. And there's the flippers. Bex continue to check items here in pod. Um, is not in go mode yet. Does still need to get that bow into TR. But now with flippers, you know, has already done those uh, flipper lock locations, is going to have to go to Independent Swamp. And he meanwhile making his way to his last crystal dungeon here in Eastern. This, this game, guys, in this series has some big Mystery Alaska vibes. Have you guys ever seen that movie, Mystery Alaska? You'll probably know what I'm talking about here. It's like a classic underdog story, right? Uh, not a lot of people probably knew who Vextoper was leading up to this group match. Everyone's going to know who he is leading this. Okay, it's not going to be the guy that forgot an item in pod, okay? He's played a hell of a series. He's a great runner. I can't... I am so excited to see what this guy does the future. And he's setting up for his land mole spike here. Now has the seventh crystal is gonna be heading on over to Ganon's Tower. Next heading on over to the location of Quake, but just a little too little too late. Now Vex played this seed, like other than this one mistake, guys, Vex played this seed masterfully. Okay. Did he get a little lucky with the Gina with the glove leading the boots? Sure. Right. Like you can call that, you can call that as you as you see it. But uh, honestly, a lot of his decision making has been very sound and like seasoned. Like again, this is stuff I would expect to see in top eight. The mechanics are there. The decision making. 
He keeps running this game. He's going to go far. He's going to go far. In Andy's position, it's hard to understand or determine, like, whether he feels kind of ahead or behind. I know this is kind of a, a narrative that a lot of commentators choose to kind of lean on. Uh, I generally don't. Um, because most times it's kind of nonsense. <laughs> Let's kind of be honest. Not to throw any of my peers under the bus, but I mean, it's kind of like, you know, you almost hear it every cast, right? You'll hear, oh, this, this runner has to feel behind. Um, I probably get in that trap too, but I feel like at this point, it's really hard to kind of understand where you sit in the seed. Like if we go through all the motions, the only thing Andy might be feeling behind to is, is boots. But honestly, not that bad, right? All right Beck's getting Quake and Shovel and saying, see you later. <laughs> I'm just going to go right to TR at this point. That is 100% the right call. We'll miss out on a Tempered Sword. But uh, you know what? We have Shovel. We're going to cash that in. And then we're going to probably head to TR at this point. GT. Nothing in the Room of Hope. So guys, you remember when I say it's not over till it's over? Key considerations. We have not seen a Trinex yet. We don't know if Ice Armos is required. Let's pay attention to Andy's magic management. It should be over uh should be overly covered, should be well. Mistakes can happen at this stage of the race. A magic flub here in GT would be a massive time loss. We see the first bottle for Andy. Uh, fairy. Bex is heading on over to TR. Will find his home. Gold sword, silvers, money. What is this? Add it to the pile. Unfortunately, is not a kind TR. Is gonna have to do full complement and find all these keys. Andy patiently waiting out the Andy Perry. This is what I was talking about, guys, with magic management. Andy knows he doesn't want to play around with this Andy Fairy. Because this could be down here. Trinex is a killer down here for magic. The good news is for Andy is he has Butter Sword now. But he's got to be very careful with his magic management. This is a very... Guys, this is a very difficult fight. But with Butter Sword, everything's easy, right? Everything's easy. This door will open up. This door will open up. And Annie knows it. Just kidding, they fixed it. <laughs> So I think before, I could be thinking GT Climb, but um, because of the layers that Trinex possesses, like he would, it wouldn't be layered correctly and he would actually, yeah, you'll see like his torso here and the, and the door would open traditionally. So he's very annoyingly got to open up these chests past that sprite. So I believe they have fixed that in like the most recent releases. now 
approaching right side. Gets grabbed by the hand. This is going to cost Andy a little bit of time here. But not as much time as a, as a death or mad, magic mismanagement in the basement. Smartly does the torches first. And is trying to save as much mana magic as possible. This is season play. We'll be able to get a magic pot here. Yep. Let's get to grab that pot. So he's gonna be relieved to find that that uh, gold sort as we see the big key for GT. Uh, in the compass room right side he's very relieved to see that uh that gold sword guys because now for him while magic management is still very important in this mode it's not as critical anymore up here in Gauntlet 2. Meanwhile, Vex is very shortly going to be approaching his bow. Helmasaur. getting his bow. He's going to be approaching a uh, very anticlimactic <laughs> Argus fight here. And he approaching was Rose 2. boss shuffle we're going to see here today. Vitreous. Andy's going to say no. Andy's got to hover fast. Gets proper eyeball positioning, makes the hover work. The strong play at this point, guys. This is completed. TR is going to be heading over to Eastern for his seventh crystal, but it's a little too little too late as Andy is approaching Aga 2. 
Nice triple. Does he go for two? He does not. He gets a double there on the second segment. Three, two, one. And he descends into Ganon. And he gained Torchwitch there with Fire Rod. Sets up for triple, and that's going to do it. Guys, Andy is going to be moving on to the next round here of the Link to the Mass main tournament bracket stage. Final stage of this tournament. Andy wins the series 2-1. to one. What a series, guys. What a great match. What a great series. All three races decidingly close up until one or two decisions or instances happening. Vex is elected to forfeit. So guys, this does mean, again, Andy is going to be moving on in the bracket stages. And we'll be facing either Wilwick or Matcap in the next round. Unfortunately for Vex, um, it's going to be the end of his journey within the tournament life. But uh, again, the future's bright, man. Tremendous performance.
All right, guys, that's going to do it. Again, guys, thank you so much for coming out and watching. It's been a great cast, great series to watch. Uh, glad you guys have enjoyed it. I've seen all the comments. I've seen all the love, guys. Thank you so much. It means a lot to me. Thank you for the bits, guys, today. Thanks for the subs. Really appreciate it, guys. I will be back to cast the next round and hopefully be able to pick up some other matches along the way. Alright guys. I'm going to send over the raid guys to the ladder channel actually. So we got Teto versus Relkin on that. Let's uh, go give him a big old raid. Enjoy the race, guys. We're going to send some more race action. Have a great night, everyone. <laughs>